It's been 20 years since the release of Homeworld 2, and sure, we've had Homeworld Deserts of Karak, as well as a full remaster of the originals in the interim, but I've waited for 20 years for a true sequel to some of my favorite games of all time, so I was rather surprised when Gearbox and Blackbird Interactive invited me to head over to Gamescom to play the game and give me a bag of shit money to talk about the game here. So let's talk about Homeworld 3. It's gameplay, it's a replayability, new mechanics, a general game feel. So once you're done watching this video, or if you see something that you think particularly interesting, or if you're a big fan of Homeworld, uh, then feel free to go ahead and use the link in the description down below to wishlist the game right on Steam. Like You can just go on there and just click that button and be done with it, and once the game comes out, you'll be notified that it is, in fact, available. Now, I need to get something important out of the way first. They had us play the War Games mode, which is a side piece from the main campaign and it's basically designed as a multiplayer co-op skirmish mode with experience levels and unlocks which is fine i did not really touch the campaign outside of the tutorial at all so just be aware of that now the mode itself is is relatively straightforward you just select one of three different fleets each with their own flavor jump into a mission run an objective or two hyperspace jump to the next with your whole fleet rinse and repeat after three rooms you fight a boss win and get a bonus that's basically the whole gist of it but the the name of the game here is really longevity to keep players playing the game but what i don't really get is that war games is completely independent from the main campaign let's be honest here you play homeworld for the meat and potatoes you want to go out onto that wagon train on the stars still though um don't get me wrong, like, War Games was pretty fun, and it's a really nice opportunity to play Homeworld with others outside of Skirmish, you can play co-op with three, but the progression in the game mode would have been such a nice addition to the game. Now, A-Spec, why would progression in a subsequent multiplayer mode be interesting for the main campaign? Well, thank you for asking, hypothetical person. The short answer is artifacts, and the long answer requires me to talk a little bit about Deserts of of Karak. So I'm gonna be real here, I didn't like Deserts of Karak too much. There were only two factions in the game, you and the Galcian, and while they were opposed from a doctrine kind of point of view, fighting the same enemy over and over again with some uh, modifiers thrown into the mix got a little bit frustrating after a while. However, what Desert of Karak did was introduce artifacts into the franchise, which are basically just boosts for your fleet that you could install on your pimped out dune buggy, and the best part is that you would essentially get different artifacts on different playthroughs. Basically, they added a roguelike element into the game, and that kind of stuff is like cracked a little old me. So yes, artifacts are back in Homeworld 3, and to me, this is probably the most meaningful addition to the game. And this is why I don't really get why Blackbird isn't using this as an opportunity to make artifacts unlockable in war games to then be relevant in the main campaign. And it adds so much more replayability, but alas, there is no crossover here. There is no ability to make your ion beam cannons or frigates more powerful in different ways, or make your interceptors faster, or make them have regen randomly as an unlock within the campaign, as far as we know. They're probably is going to be artifacts, but there's no artifacts that you can unlock through the war games, at least as far as I understand. And whilst I did say that I only really played war games, it wasn't 100% true. I also had access to the tutorial, and yes, you get to use the mothership in it. And good news to all of those people who didn't like the horizontal ship, it's got a button that allows you to uh, turn it vertical in to a very chunky, chunky banana. Why is it there? Why does it have this function? Are there gameplay implications? Don't know. Could it be nostalgia bait? But, you know, who am I to argue with Space Banana? Maybe it's sure to make sure the ship can move through the uh, space monoliths or something along those lines. Anyway, to put all of this stuff into perspective, let's just play a round of war games to get a really good idea of what's actually going on here and you can get a good idea of what the gameplay in Homeworld 3 is going to be like. 
War games is relatively simple. You set up your fleet. Oh, look, it is a battle cruiser, apparently. And it's not as big as a carrier. Anyway, you get to set up your ship. You get all your uh, your colors. Of course, I'm going to go with the Tidon colors because I am that kind of guy. And then on top of that, you get to select what your uh, type of fleet. Your strike fleet, your recon fleet, or your bomber fleet. Uh, I tried the bomber fleet for a little bit, but you don't get any interceptors or uh, assault frigates with this, which is problematic. Uh, instead, I'm going to go with the recon fleet because it allows me to pick up an artifact. And artifacts are super important in this game because it allows you to modify your fleet and basically make them even better. So let's just save this and we got the recon fleet selected. Alrighty, here we are right off the get-go. Very straightforward. Let's just select our carrier. As you can see, there's a couple of changes here immediately with uh, the way the uh, the screen works, etc. But overall, like the entire experience is relatively straightforward. We're immediately going to go and send the carrier out to uh, go to this RU point over here because uh, we don't actually have any um like nebulae that we need to harvest from no we just have this wreckage which we need to go and uh, take care of but yeah this is uh, our resource controller for those of you who hated those things in the last game i am so sorry to report that the resource controller is the only way for you to get resources now because the resource collected our characters are now cooked into the resource controller we're actually going to go ahead and just build two of those extra right away whilst also getting a assault frigate and a support frigate uh research and all that stuff overall no overall uh the game itself is pretty straightforward in terms of its layouts like if you're familiar with homeworld you are familiar with homeworld 3 like it is very very similar in that regard what it's not similar in is, uh, you may have already noticed this, is that there is terrain. Like, it feels very EVE Online in a certain kind of way. If you're familiar with that game, then uh, there is a lot of terrain going on over here, which I think is fascinating. Uh, this is something they wanted to add into Homeworld 2, but apparently didn't have time for uh, at the time anyway. And uh, yeah, you got all of this terrain to navigate. Is it a good addition? I don't know, but uh, you're definitely going to be moving your ships up and down and left and right quite a lot. Now here's the reason why I took the recon fleet. I get to pick myself some of these here artifacts a heavy bomber or assault frigate berserker pattern or beam assault frigate pattern which unlocks a new ship type which is kind of cool but i let's actually select a new fleet and i get a next one interceptor brawler which is nice or ion frigate sniper pattern which increases the range of the ion frigate but also makes it see less far basically makes it blind unless you go recons so we'll just go uh, for interceptors and my other two uh, resource controllers are now up and running. Alright, let's talk a little bit about the enemies here. If we can get some visibles on it. Hold on, there we go. So, the enemies in this game are very much progenitor based. I have a little flare of Vager being thrown into the mix as well. Once we see some of their frigates, we'll, uh, we can talk about them a little bit more. But in the meantime, we need to get a support frigate and as many assault frigates as well as scepters online. But basically, we'll talk about, about them in a little bit. But in the meantime, we'll send the carrier out to move over there. As you can see, we can actually select the carrier and just uh, click straight onto our objective and the carrier will move there. And because there is galactic terrain, the carrier will actually have to move uh, in a different way. Now, as you can see, um, the carrier doesn't feel particularly big compared to the rest of the terrain. And this is a very, very large departure of previous homeworld games, where the carrier, as well as the battle cruiser, felt like some of the largest things that you can get. Let's uh, get some... Uh, let's get some squadrons up and running here. There we go. Formations are back. They actually work. Unlike in Homeworld Remastered, where they were rather broken. Aggressive systems and stances, all that stuff works just fine. And, uh, yeah. All that stuff is actually working really, really well. Of course, we can dock our uh, stuff with our carrier quite easily. It does look very sexy, though. It does really have that Homeworld vibe as part of it. There we go. 
Just getting some strike craft going. Apparently, we need to rescue somebody here. Uh, it looks like it is just another ship. But in the meantime, we can take a look at our resource controllers. So you can see uh, the resource collectors sit underneath the resource controllers, and then they will just go to their various objectives, which is pretty straightforward and pretty standard. Let's go back to the carrier, as I have uh, just managed to build my first frigates. I got four of them, actually. That's nice. So uh, let's actually send those frigates out. Assault frigates, uh, in my experience so far with the game, are some of the um, most useful ones in the game. In Homeworld 1 and Homeworld 2, uh, they weren't necessarily all that useful unless you sent a wall of them towards the enemy. And the fleet cap in this is pretty aggressive, which is unfortunate, but it does mean that uh, you can use them quite effectively. And with the right relics, we can actually reduce the amount of ships that we have, specifically the interceptors, and add that fleet cap to our frigate count, which is actually super useful. Uh, in addition, I have built a support frigate, which is also incredibly useful here. Because if you lose your character, you lose the game, uh, which is obviously pretty standard. But yeah, having a support frigate here is super useful because it means that you can support your other frigates. You do that very similarly to what how you would do it in the past. Receiving. Just uh, select support and then uh, uh, help those guys. The carrier itself is also no slouch. It's very nice. But now let's take a, take a look here at uh, the enemies here and uh, their design. So this is a corvette. Um, these guys, the enemies of Homeworld 3, are basically the... Uh, precursors back in action with a little bit of vigor uh, flow as I uh, mentioned earlier as well they're very Corvette heavy uh, they got a lot of Corvettes in their lineup what's going on here why is this uh, ship not being helped right because we need to bounce between locations here okay let me just uh, select all my stuff and we'll just engage everything apparently I was supposed to you know um, rescued the ship and I was a little bit preoccupied but that's okay we can do everything here as uh, our assault frigates are just on standby as uh, all of my resource controllers are back well so uh, it looks like we got damage models and everything uh, which is nice you know who doesn't like some damage shaders on their uh, ships makes it a little bit difficult sometimes to see where they are though which is once again a little bit unfortunate but nothing we can't handle all right let's uh save this ship make sure that uh, we have things in the meantime we should probably um we have our support frigate right so let's just use the support frigates to yield the resource controller we, over we have over here oh. some more enemies coming in again a lot of corvettes very straightforward okay capture the point we got a rescue one more fleet so I'll just send the carrier over there with the assault frigates in tow and all of that should be just fine interceptors in the meantime are just floating about uh all of these ships uh similar to the previous games do have bonuses like damage boosts and uh, dodging and speed boosts, etc. So all that stuff is there, um, which is kind of part of the core for Homeworld in general. So, you know, nothing special there. But if you're new to the franchise, uh, every ship has its own ability. Uh, it's a bit micro-y at times, which is kind of strange considering the developers are uh, somewhat focused on making this game a little bit more macro-heavy than before. But uh, yeah, that's apparently a thing that they are working on. Let me just quickly rescue this thing here. And that will be the first mission done for this uh, this War Games thing. Sometimes the missions are very long. Sometimes they're very short. It's uh, it's really just the luck of the draw, really. We should probably get some Railgun Corvettes. Let's get some resource on some Railgun Corvettes. Plus our Scepters are just keeping uh, the enemy busy. Yeah, let's just queue up 15 Railgun Corvettes. Go down Corvettes and be done with that. Whilst uh, you know, these guys are just floating around. Rescuing this uh, civilian. Like, I'm really not putting a lot of effort into defending my uh, resources. 
Whereas, like, if you were playing a home world 2, especially in skirmish mode, you would race, you would bum rush these resource controllers and trying to cripple your enemy as soon as possible. The AI hasn't really figured it out yet for some reason. It's still got a couple of months of polish as of the making of this video, so we shall see. It looks like they've managed to suck up all the resources, which is good. And then uh, we can move on with our fleet very shortly. Alrighty, we finished the objective. We get a new artifact that we can claim. Uh, the Corvette Vulcan increases Corvette fire rate by 33%. Reduces damage by 15%. Enable Vulcan upgrade. So basically, this opens up yet another path. Let's just jump out of here. Let's get all of our stuff going. And let's go to the second mission. There we go. And as is tradition with Homeworld, uh, the entire fleet will come with me. The fleet is persistent, which is nice. Of course, and basically uh, it will allow us to just casually move on to the next mission. There is the fleet. Everything is there. I'm still not particularly happy about the relatively low fleet cap, but you know, that's how it is. And let me just set uh, a destination Enemy here. Vessels will be closing in on our location. Just move the carry around. Uh, when you start the game, uh, the entire fleet is bound to your carrier, so they'll move with your carrier as it moves around, uh, which was standard before as well, so that's at least great. And uh, basically it will allow us to just move our ships around, especially at the start of the mission when we need to get these RUs under control early on. That's super helpful. Enemies inbound. Okay, enemies are coming in through this incursion point. Once again, another large space derelict object that we are floating in. Um, again, this was something that they wanted to have in Homeworld 2, but couldn't get together, which is unfortunate, but here we are. And uh, let's just set our entire fleet to aggressive, and uh, they will start should start engaging. Now, this is the railgun for that. Uh, and as the name implies, it's got a massive railgun underneath it, which will track and just one-shot basically everything. Like that ship that just went over there. But I'm actually really impressed by the graphical fidelity of Homeworld 3 so far. Uh, it's It looks very polished. There's a lot of great shader effects going on. Like, normally I'm not really a big fan of, like, motion blur and things like that. But in this particular case, some of the effects will work really, really well. And uh, I'm rather glad that uh, they did some of these sort of things here. Alright, so we got probes. I don't necessarily think they're going to be quite useful to us. Apparently there's an attack. Right now we're just waiting for our objective to come in. Uh, whilst we just put up resourcer uh, stuff. Yeah, let's have all that stuff going. I need another artifact to maybe get some more frigates. They're pretty rare. I've only had them drop once, and I've played maybe 15 rounds of this so far. There you go. So we need to intercept enemy transit and transports. Okay. So we need to basically intercept enemy uh, enemy stuff. So what we'll do here is we'll take the railgun corvettes and set them to guard the resourcers. It's probably a good thing to do, considering they've immediately gotten under attack. Where are my core? Where are my corvettes here? Come on, you guys are supposed to be attacking all of these guys. Cool. Like I said, we'll uh, we'll put the corvettes on defensive positions here. And uh, the scepters, they can come with the fleets. We'll put a nice little wedge formation on them, make them nice and, nice and aggressive. And just take it from there. But right now, we need to destroy these corvettes. Or actually, they're more like destroyer size, but they're... Um, they're ships that basically are just moving stuff around, like the logistical ships. Now, I know that these guys do have um, capture ships. So, like the marine corvettes or the marine frigates from Homeworld 2 or the salvage corvettes from Homeworld 1. So, they can capture. And there's definitely capturing in the game, which makes me so warm and fuzzy on the inside. Um, because that means that uh, Grand Theft Homeworld 3 is definitely going to be a thing uh, when we get there. I would like you to go and attack these ships now, please. So, um, time to 
a beeline for them, please. The support critic. Frigate is critical. What are you talking about? You're like half HP. Well, at least they're shooting at the support frigate and nothing really important. Alright, sweet. We uh, killed the transports. We get ourselves another one of these. You know, the Vulcan upgrades I was talking about. Uh, hull repair, passive repair, fire rate increase, brawler upgrade. I would like to have the passive repair. Let's get out of here. Let's go to the final mission. Alright, last mission. We're going to go straight to the support bay. So that's where we need to go here. Basically, this is an area, uh, there are three um, progenitor production facilities that we need to uh, cripple. And this is just a good indication of how the um, verticality of the uh, of the game actually comes in. Like in a previous game, you could just bounce around with the verticality of it quite easily. And just go up and down and trying to intercept enemies, etc. Like you could do all of that stuff, but it wasn't necessarily something that you sh needed to do at all. Uh, here, you kind of need to do that all the time. You need to move up and down with your ships all over the place and make sure that, uh, you know, you are in a good position. And uh, sometimes objectives are high, sometimes they are low, uh, but at least moving in between, of, between them is relatively easy, which is rather nice. I should build more interceptors. I got more corvettes, I got more assault frigates. And again, it's a shame that uh, I didn't get the... Uh, get more frigates option this time around because in one game I think I was rolling around with 16 frigates or something along those lines and that will just slap everything in the face in this game which is just awesome all right resource controls are on their way they're almost like manta rays going into the kill like they're down there to the RUs like we can go and take a look at the old resource collectors there they are that's what they look like these days. Man, there used to be these long tubes and like after that, these little crab things. Like, you know, in the end, everything turns into crap. That's kind of the situation that we had over there. All right, let's uh, Corvettes, let's kill the targets. They should be able to slap them out of the sky quite easily. It's a couple of strike fighters. I'm pretty sure the strike fighters are unique uh, to, the, to this faction. Game's still a little bit buggy at times, but, you know, um, it's not been released yet, so what's going to happen? Uh, salvaging, for instance, in this particular version of the game does not work yet, which is unfortunate. Um, if you kill some of the larger ships, uh, they will break up, uh, especially like these guys. Uh, these Corvettes, by the way, if this doesn't remind you of anything, then I don't know what will, uh, if you are familiar with this franchise. Anyway, these ships will break up and you can salvage them. The effects are quite good, though. Very, very nice. But, uh, trying to decapture everything, making sure we got everything, and let's put everything into a nice formation. But this is the thing, right? Like we we, uh, we just finished this this objective, and now we're moseying on to the next one. Homeworld was always a game about scale and being lost in space, and now you've got all these gigantic ass monoliths. That just humble you in every way, shape, and form. And sure, you had all these uh, graveyards of ships that were just floating about earlier. But, yeah, um, seeing seeing this is just very, very different. Sure, the mothership still um, completely outpaces these guys in, in size. But it's still nothing compared to, for instance, these uh, progenitor uh, bays, basically. Which, again, I think is... A little bit unfortunate and whether or not the additional value of all of this additional terrain because the whole point is is that you can hide behind it to hide from things like missiles or kinetic weapons because apparently every single um, projectile in the game is um, simulated uh, where you know every single object is uh, can be tracked and if you're sitting behind something it means that you can uh, it basically you have defense in space so, you know, that's the thing. Uh, is that a good addition? I don't know. I would need to play the campaign to actually get a better feeling for this. And it's too early to say anything about it now. Uh, it's definitely Homeworld so far. Like, it's stuff in space. The theming is right. 
uh, the gameplay is right. The design style is right. And some of the other stuff, you know, we still need to wait for whether or not that is the case. But uh, yeah, it's, uh, it's one of those things that you need to ask yourself. Like, are these the right decisions to have made? I actually think that the artifact system is probably the, one of the best things they've added in uh, forever, as I already mentioned. But still, um, is that going to have enough impact on the game? So, for instance, right now, my carrier is moving down uh, with the terrain. And, like, attack frigates or assault frigates are right below it because we need to go to this location because it is, in fact, contested by a bunch of uh, other frigates, which is fine. Uh, it just means that any other ships that are trying to come nearby uh, will, once again, run into some trouble uh, because, you know, they have all this navigation, uh, to, to, this terrain to navigate, uh, which... Could be problematic. We'll see whether or not it is, but uh, it just means that the pathing needs to be super solid for everything. Also, the ship designs for uh, for these guys, the Incarnate, all of them look very similar, and it's sometimes difficult to see which ship is which. In Homeworld One and Homeworld Two, the design uh, design identity between all the enemy ships was very, very straightforward. You could very easily see uh, which ship was which. And that's something that's sometimes a little bit difficult to see over here. And I also hope that during the campaign, it's not just going to be the Incarnate that you're fighting against, but also maybe some Tidon or, I don't know, some, some other factions. That would be nice. But we'll see. Alrighty, the boss of the mission, the battle cruiser, has just plopped in. It doesn't feel that big. It doesn't feel as, as like as threatening as the battle cruisers from um, Homeworld 2. And even if you like go over it and see what kind of weapons they have, sir, they got beam weapons, anti frigate cannons, anti frigate missiles. But that means they're super vulnerable to bombers, which makes perfect sense. Still, though, a, a single battle cruiser is about to be melted by my frigate fleets, which is fine, I guess. Anyway, here you go. Uh, shooting missiles. If you can sit behind terrain, as you can see here, all these uh, objects are being blocked, uh, are blocking the, uh, the firepower. And uh, now we're just swarming this thing, and it uh, should be dead pretty quickly, actually. At least I would hope so. One thing uh, you may also notice is there are no um, modules. Like, I cannot click on, I cannot focus on blocking the engines or killing the engines or putting separate modules on, on ships. Like, the subsystems, it simply does not exist in Homeworld 3. Uh, which is just unfortunate. Like, it's just one of those things. Also, uh, Command just uh, has just decided to send me a, a, a destroyer. Good lord, it doesn't look sexy with this tie down skin. That's the way uh, the cookie crumbles. Oh, my carrier is not doing too hot. Uh, okay. We should probably do something about that. Yeah, this battle cruiser trying real hard to get close to my carrier, but it's dead, so it doesn't matter. And that'll be a round of war games done, basically. Like we can get the destroyer to move in and basically to clean everything up. But that is essentially a round of war games, and then you just go into the next one and go in co into a completely different scenario. Now, the version that I played here today is obviously not done, as Homeworld 3 is not uh, due to come out until February of next year. But still, you know, in general, uh, all the bells and whistles are here. And that took 40 minutes for a gameplay here. And I leveled. What did I get? Unlock the Barrage Torpedo Frigate, which will now appear in the future selections. So basically, I got a new ship type that I can use during war games. That's cool. But yeah, for instance, we got the Danger Zone artifact that I unlocked earlier. It'd be super cool just to, you know, have uh, artifacts that you can unlock to put into the main campaign. as something that can appear. Or Tactical Bomber artifact, or Assault Recon artifact, or like a whole slew of them. Like, you can make this list like a hundred items of uh, things that can randomly pop up during your campaign some stats how many RUs I collected how much I spent built versus lost units killed etc all this stuff is here but yeah that's 
War Games, which is part of Homeworld 3. Uh, it comes out next year, in 2024, in February. If you want to go and check that out, please do so. And I want to thank um, Gearbox, as well as Blackbird Interactive, for making this video possible and inviting me to Gamescom to, uh, yeah, check out the game. In the meantime, we're going to go ahead and wrap this one up up here if you cannot wait to play some more uh, homeworld and you're still gagging at the bit check out this video from homeworld 2 uh homeworld 1 actually where we steal everything and that is not um nailed to the ground so again if you liked what you saw in this video head over towards steam using the link in the description below so you can wishlist the game and you will be notified when it comes out until next time my name is Vanesvek and take good care of yourselves and i'm really looking forward to homeworld 3 when it comes out so we can dive headfirst in the campaign. We'll see you there.